This is a Democracy Maseko, the luxury time watchmaker. Today we'll be doing a, a sea master titanium finish with uh, gold touches. So it was in a used up condition, so we try to give it some life one more time. I'll be showing you guys um, the different processes of uh, what I do, the tapes, uh, the compounds, the, the brushes uh, for different types of finishes, the machinery, the equipment. So just before we start, these are the different um, wheels that we use by Bergeon. So this is for uh, your matte finishing on the side of the case. So you'll see that on the titanium, um, we have um, the, the matte or the satin finish. Uh, compared to where we have the high shine of the gold and then this is also another burge on um, Finishing matte finish wheel, but this is more of this is more abrasive compared to to the brush and then for the polishes and the high finish uh, We're using the Luxa um, Where there's the high shine polish which is the cotton wheel or the wall wheel and then we have different compounds with different abrasives um, effect. So from your rouges all the way to your, your high shines. So I'll be explaining the whole process behind the refurb that we have done on this Omega. This is when I was just checking up on the pushes, checking up on the timekeep and checking up on the crown. Just the whole makeup of the whole watch if everything is still intact before working on it. You will see that here I am trying to remove the spring bars. It took some time to, to get them off um, because they were worn out, they were rusty, and they had a lot of, um, it, it was clogging the whole spring system on, on the spring bars. It took me some time, but with just a little bit of movement and fiddling, I eventually got it out. We got one side off, now we're trying to take off the other side. Eventually we got it off um, on both sides, the strap. Now we are using the Bergeon uh, Jaxa tool. Um, it's a rounded point, three points, but on this case we were just using two to remove the back case. And from there on, we've unscrewed the back case. Now we are trying to remove, uh, what we're trying to get to is the movement, to remove the whole movement from the case. There's a cover, there's a movement cover that comes right after the case back that protects the movement from, um, from anything that may come after removing the case. We will be now removing the gasket, which is also very dry and, and brittle uh, but I'll show you how we work on that and lubricate it and uh, grease it up one more time. So there is no bridles holding down the case, it's just a friction ring that holds it and pushes it down that works together with the back case. So when you screw down the back case, it pushes down the ring and putting the, the movement in position, the ring that we putting together with the movement. And here we are using the Rodigo to try to remove the pushes for the chronograph system. So those are the gaskets that come out together to seal the pusher to make it waterproof. There's two gaskets together with a washer, the spring 
and the pusher itself. So this Rodigo helps me to keep everything in position that I don't lose it that when the clip that holds down the, pu the pusher just sits on to the Rodigo instead of flying out because it's also friction based tension. There you can see the washer, the casket and the spring. There's the clip that holds the pusher to the case. So you can understand with the oils and the grease, there's a lot of clogging onto it and that's the reason why it's sticking to the tweezer like that. There's more of the gaskets and the washer. So roughly with the disassembling process, it's very important to keep all your components in one position or in one area so that when you reassemble you don't have to start re-looking for all of those other components that you you need to put the whole case together it may take you about 20 to 25 minutes depending on the watch um, and the number of components and how they put together so we'll be trying to remove the bezel of the watch the ring of the bezel is an 18 karat um, bezel ring. We're going to have the first attempt. It failed. Once that is done, you have to try by all means to keep precaution of um, materials like soft materials like gold. You don't want to force forcefully remove anything. So we are going to try a different route in terms of refurbing the bezel so we didn't remove the bezel so every component is ready to be polished the pushes are out the helium the helium spring is out on the left hand side of the spring of, of the case this is where we do our our taping of the bezel so this is a special type of tape it's called a heat resistant tape it's different from your cello tape it's different from your your normal masking tape so there's a big scratch as i was pointing out there's a big scratch that goes across the case and we are trying to remove it by by hand before using the, the matte finish wheels Okay, we have switched the wheels for a more aggressive abrasive effect uh, to remove that big scar that goes across the case. So we have first tried using uh, a hand file. We went over to, to that specific wheel, that abrasive wheel. So what we are trying to get here to is we're not trying to lose the case or the form of the watch. The lugs are very important to keep that shape intact in, in and to keep that shape and form because once you lose that shape the whole shape of the watch just becomes distorted so we'll be going over the edges or the bevel finishes by hand removing most of the scratches that are there And we go over to the steamer, removing all the excess material that we don't need. This is when we going for the radial finish on the bottom of the case. So it has to be 
dead center of the wheel that we are attaching it to to have a complete radial even finish so we'll be using the Bergeon ultra fine brush for that radial finish more of the taping for for the bezel This process is very important to take your time, smoothly go over the bezel, not try not to remove any material, but just try to go over the scratches. So we'll be doing the same thing around the back case. So this also has a radial finish to it we just have to be careful of the emblem um, or the crest that's in the middle because it has a different pattern from the radial finish so here we are using a sandpaper 300 grid in order to have that smooth finish to the case on the edge of of the crest so these wheels are from Luxa um, for for high finish medium finishes and uh, for preparatory work when you're preparing to do to, to your high shines these are the best wheels or these are the wheels that we use in our opinion I think it's 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 the best in, in the game we've polished our, our pushes both of them they also finely coated with uh, the 18 karat gold so we have to be very careful in terms of the pressure that we put on we then clean them up by going through to the ultrasonic that's the helium the helium crown that goes on on the top left of the of the case for when you're when you're diving or whenever you're in contact with water you need to release it after you dive for for release of the pressure inside of the movement that's the use of the helium crown so we'll be going over the scratches and over the matte finish with the high shine brush So we have different patterns on this on the strap it goes in order of matte finish high shine matte finish and high shine this was the longest part of of the refurb because we had to tape each and every pattern or each and every finish according to its finish So you have to understand that the back it's as important as the front so we did a complete matte finish on the back of the strap itself now we are doing the steaming of all the components we are then preparing for assembly where we have new gaskets installed
we are now installing the new gaskets together with the washers for the pushes With the washers and the gaskets intact, it is very important to use your lubrification one more time. So here we are using the Morbus Synthetic Grease, the 9504, for all the components that will be in motion and action with one another to reduce friction and damage to, to, the, to all the components. We'll be reinstalling the clips to each of the pushers. The pushers are fully installed. The inspection of the pushers, if they engage well and smoothly, is now done. Time to re attach the movement to the case. thorough inspection of the dial is being done for any fluff dust particles and this is the process or the moment that we've been waiting for the marriage of the case with the movement more of the synthetic grease on the crown, on the main crown before installation. More synthetic grease on the case as well. A thorough inspection whether everything is in working condition sweeping off the hands this is the process when we are cleaning up the gaskets refreshing them um, this is the new gasket that we'll be reattaching because the previous gasket was cracked and very dry it is very important to have a clean fresh gasket or more effective waterproofing of the case. Cleaning of any fingerprints and dust particles on the back case, more of the synthetic grease on the thread.
reinstallation of new spring bars. The second spring bar being installed. thorough inspection of everything that we have done on the watch okay uh, we are done with the service finally and uh, we've just refurbed it we're just doing some final checks so this is what now it looks like this is what it looks like now and um, it took us about, let's say, two hours to get to this point. But um, this looks way better than how it came in. So as you can see, the gold touches are back to the high shine, together with your pushes on the sides, the crown. We checked it, we did a whole waterproofing on it. Uh, we cleaned the dial. Um, yeah, this is way better than how it looked like before. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. And um, just like and subscribe for, for more content of this nature.